This summer I take my first ever visit to a juggling and circus convention in the beautiful historic town of Appleby in Cumbria in the north of England. The event is held in the local school and it has a camping field so once I've pitched up my tent I take a walk down to the venue to have a look around. Uh, the programme is tacked up on the walls and it's a flexible format so that you can add your own events if you want to hold something in the workshop room, uh, there's a, a crafts room, there's two juggling halls, there's catering hall, there's show hall and the first night is an opening show which gives a bit of a sense of the range not only of um, disciplines uh, but also kind of a range of activities that you can do over this week long event. I have my own workshop to run on the first morning, which is uh, based on my circus criticism work, but it's looking at what we review when we review a juggling show, what are the cliches, what are the things that jugglers actually want to read about and hear about. Um, and then I'm on a panel, which is uh, insane, because it's with juggling legend Chris Primo and David Kane, who is a historian and juggler from the USA. Uh, what we're going to see today is a combination of my performing career and my a juggling his, a history career. Uh, what I've done is I have uh, researched uh, juggling tricks and routines from the 1600s to the very early 1900s uh, that we typically don't see. So many of these, no one else in the entire world does. Uh, and so this is going to be equal parts lecture and show. And the show was equal part entertainment and education. Some of the historical tricks that you don't see anymore were absolutely fascinating. I've then got some of education of my own by heading to the main juggling hall and taking part in a club spinning workshop. So I'm not really one for throwing and catching stuff, but actually keeping hold of an object and using contact manipulation skills is more down my alley. Uh, I then went to do some ball spinning, which I was rubbish at, it's really hard, and then Chris Cremo's hat juggling workshop. Uh, again, I've never done it before, so when I managed to get a hat on my head, that was top for me. I did some knot tying workshops, uh, I went and did some magic with elastic bands, I, I even did a role playing game in the workshop room. And then it was the first of three solo shows that take place over the festival week. And this is Mark Watson, the preview of his Edinburgh Fringe show. There's a review on the Circus Diaries website. The next show of the week is Robin Boondale with What Does Stuff Do? I do realise that this doesn't look very juggly so far. But we are still following the same process as we were with the balls. Variation and arrangement of action to create material. Developing a vocabulary which exploits the physical qualities of the present elements. Being at a juggling convention, we get a special guest appearance from Felix, and there is a review of this site show online as well, as is the review of West Peden's Zebra, which was the third solo performance of the week. I've lost track of time a little bit, uh, but in between all this action, there was also some sleeping. Uh, I head back to my tent for a crash, and... Um, I'm not sure what day we're on now, but there's a breakfast with David Kane talking about a Q&A with some of his history. Uh, there's also video sessions with Sakari Manisto of Juggle Doll fame and Wes Peden. And, uh, yeah, obviously you recognise some of the tricks from um, the three club routine yesterday. And this this was one of the sections that really um, helped me realise that uh, how to um, uh, show tricks in an in a evolving way. And uh, it really makes you think a lot about what order tricks should be in when you're editing and you know you're like okay if I see this one and then this one is that the best or this one and then that 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 one you know I re-edited re-ordered uh, this section maybe 20 times trying to find you know should the rings go first at the clubs and what order should the rings go and what how long to show this pattern and uh, makes you think a lot when you're editing and that helps you later on stage and because I got used to thinking a lot about this stuff Many of the things I make for stage, I film all the tricks and then kind of make the routine in my editing program and then it get, lets me kind of be my own director and I'm like, okay, so I don't need to tell myself what to do, I tell this little version of me what to do and then afterwards I have at least um, a general map of what I'm going to do on stage. So that's one way that kind of filming has helped me do live stuff. So this convention is not just giving me an insight into uh, juggling techniques and history and processes, it's also giving me a broader impression of 
what different activities come under this juggling banner. And there's certain traditions that seem to be part of convention culture, like the games, where people will take part in little tournaments to see who comes out with a prize, and fight nights where the top jugglers compete to knock each other's clubs out of their hands. Uh, so this is all taking part in the Great Hall. I do even get a chance to wander around Historic Appleby. They have a castle. And then I head back to the convention centre to chat with Rosie, the organiser. Oh, hello. hello. So we are uh, nearing the gala show this evening and uh, I thought I'd take a moment to catch organiser extraordinaire Rose Kelly. Good, good use of words there. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, you may recognise her from the very first Circus Voices video, which I'll put in the little up link. And uh, so I wanted to ask you about this convention um, because this is my first one and there's lots of things that I think are brilliant about it. But I don't know if this is what all conventions are like or if there's specific things that you've tried to do for catch that are worth mentioning. Um, for juggling conventions, I think we've had uh, all the big elements that you get at one, which is uh, a 24 hour space to juggle and train, um, lots of shows, and generally some extra things dotted about that, are sort of, that, that help people there. Uh, just, just little extra things, food and games and things like that. So the content of most juggling conventions is pretty, you know, set in like what people expect. I think we're a bit different here because um, everything's kind of self-driven. So people who want Fight Night have organised it and done it. And people who want Renegade are organising it and doing it. Uh, I think a lot of juggling conventions have gotten used to the fact that there's a team of core team and they organise everything and have to spend the whole week working and they don't get to enjoy that festival that they've worked hard to create. Um, and it, that's a bit sad, I think. And everybody else gets to have fun and just to sit and wait for something to happen. So I think this one comes uh, in a good in a good middle ground of like, the, the important things are organized. So, you know, there's a venue, there's, there's food, there's things for people to do, but all the extra nice stuff people are making happen themselves. And that's making them really special because people who don't often have a chance to organize things or maybe couldn't organize a whole big thing going on, can take a step up and start doing a little part of it, which is nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. And you said that, uh, that so often the organisers don't get a chance to join in and you are sat behind the desk I'm holding raffle tickets, tickets right now. But I'm kind of enjoying it because this is the first time I've sat down today. So that's good. So I'm are liking. you happy with how it's gone? I'm really happy with how it's gone. Uh, I know there have been some problems with uh, our performers in the gala show tonight are a little bit uh, stressed. But it's also very hot and everyone's, you know, it's getting to the end of the week. It's a tired, hot, hungry kind of day. And sometimes if, if things aren't just perfect, you start to panic a little bit about your act. And I, but I think everybody here is so relaxed and so happy that we could put a show on in a skip and people would love it. <laughs> because the performers we've got are all amazing. They can handle anything. They can do anything. They're so professional and they're so taking it in their stride. But I know that, like... If I was going to say, is there, has there been a bump in the road? It's, it's been things like that because I know that. Is that kind of technical? Technical thing? stuff has been difficult. Um, but apart from that, uh, I can't really say anything has gone wrong or that anything uh, hasn't worked. We've just had loads of workshops, games, and loads of fun. Cool. Well, yeah. I, am, I am a juggling convention convert. Hooray! So if I don't win the amazing magazines that I'm coveting, mm -hmm. then maybe I'll win a convention. Okay. Maybe you'll win a convention. Okay. You might see you at Lee's convention is a really good one, and the Durham one is over a few days, so you could have a weekend. It's just like a, 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 a short weekend. Mm -hmm. It's a nice one. Maybe. Or EJC in... Where is Newark? Is that Lincolnshire? Yeah, it's like it's fairly central in the country, I think. <laughs> Newark on Trent. Yeah. It must be near Stoke on Trent ish. Must be. All the Trents must be together, right? You'd think. <laughs> How long can a river How really many be? Trents can we have? <laughs> Alright, cool. Well thanks Rosie. I'm gonna... No problem. So a hall full of balloons and apple on a bee heralds the start of the gala show. Uh, the footage from my camera is not brilliant, so I recommend you go to Luke Burridge's video, which I will tag for much better uh, shots of the shows. It started with the ring juggling of Artie Larkinen. Uh, then it's Matthew Tiffany with all sorts of manipulation and ball spinning. Uh, Sakari Manesto with uh, club juggling of... Um, Odd tricks that I've not seen before, and a and a 
very finished disposition. And the whole show is presented by Loz Because, who then finishes up with the first half of the show with an LED hula hooping routine. And that's after the revelation that she is now pregnant again. So congratulations, Loz. And uh, after the interview, John Pete uh, it gives a hilarious presentation, which I think has some in-jokes for the convention crowd, but even without knowing those in-jokes, it was a hilarious um, routine and very engaging. Uh, then there is the hoop juggling of Florence Huit, um, and her routine is called Dacatine, uh, and it's very, um, what's the word, whimsical. And the finale is the world-famous Chris Cremo with his full act of hat juggling and cigar boxes. If you've not seen it on YouTube, go and check it out. And also go and check out some conventions. Even if you think juggling is not your thing, you'll be surprised at the range of activities available. And the atmosphere at Catch, at least, has been brilliant.